What's going on guys? Hip Pause here with a beginner tutorial on uh, how to get started in 3D Studio Max uh, modeling. Uh, we are going to box model an A-frame house. I believe that this is the one model that everybody should start with uh, as opposed to any characters or anything like that. It's the one that we all recognize um, and it does in fact go through a quite a few of the tools that we are going to come to rely on um, heavily in our daily routines uh, using this program. So the first thing that we want to do is because we're box modeling something, we're going to start with a box. So if you hold, if you click and drag, you get this here, but if you hold control, it goes from the center and actually constrains the proportions here. However, uh, it doesn't uh, do that once you let go. Uh, you can't hold control or do anything to get this last value to constrain to a cube. So in the end, you still kind of want to type it in, but you can type it in after the fact. And you do that over there on the right. So we have our box here. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this box is completely centered in the world at 0, 0, 0. Now the um, transform information for any object is actually located down here. Okay. And you can see that we're actually a little bit off. We're 0.062 meters uh, in the X here. So we're actually shifted this way a certain amount. Now there's two ways to zero this out. The first would be, <coughs> excuse me, to double click the first one, hit zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, tab. Okay, that's a, actually a very fast way to do this, okay, because what you can do is like that, okay, just alternate your taps, all right. The other way, is to actually right click the spinner arrows here those will come down but you need three aimed clicks here okay these are small targets alright I found that it's much faster to just select one and go okay zero zero tab zero tab zero okay and then you can hit enter to finalize it if I hit say five and then tab it brings me to the next one but if I hit say, a value and then I hit enter it keeps me on there Okay, and now anything I type from now on is going to enter into this field. Uh, you want to use like your middle mouse to constantly activate the window, at which will take you out of here. Okay, so anytime you type something, just activate the window, and that locks things in. Okay, just wiggle the view. All right, use middle mouse. Don't use left mouse. Don't use right mouse. Use use your middle mouse. Okay, you don't need to hold Alt or anything uh, to do that. If you hold Alt uh, and middle mouse, you're going to rotate around. Okay, if you just grab it you move around wheel mouse in and out okay uh, there's other options here if you want a smoother in and out here this is actually not a zoom okay this is an FOV change be careful with this one don't go too crazy okay um, Z will zoom in on stuff okay uh, if I make a duplicate of this here uh, I did that by holding shift and dragging it you hold shift before you drag if I click Z here, it's going to zoom in on this object, but if I have nothing selected, it's going to zoom in on the whole scene. Okay. So conversely, if I convert this to an editable polygon here, and I just pick this one point and I hit Z, it's going to zoom me very, very close to that one singular point. Okay. If I hit Z there, I'm about as close as I can get to that. All right. If I have two and I hit Z, okay, it's going to try to frame them. So it's going to bring it in pretty close. Uh, same thing with faces. Hit Z, it'll try to center around that face. So, like I said, if you don't have anything selected when you hit Z, it treats it as having everything selected. So it's like um, zoom all the way out to everything. Okay. So the Z key is very handy for getting back to where you want to be. All right. You can also drag this kind of thing around here. I don't suggest that. I suggest using your middle mouse or if you have conversely a space mouse, you can use that. So if you have a space mouse, you're one of the lucky people because it's fun as shit to, to work this way. I do have one, um, which you can notice that I'm moving my mouse up and down, but I'm still panning like left and right. You can see that because I'm using this 3D joystick to move my view around. All right. Normally I can't do that uh, because if I move my mouse everything goes with it right so space mouse is a handy thing to have uh, so let's get into it alright so let's start fresh we're gonna start with a box once again so we're just gonna drag that out anywhere and we want the box to be 50 50 50 alright and then we hit Z so here we have the start of our A-frame house like I said it's just a simple box now what we want to do is we want to convert this so that we can edit it right now it's actually a box object which means it's still a primitive which means we can 
adjust shapes, uh, how many segments and things like that, but we won't do that here. So if you wanted to start with a subdivided box, you could simply give it one or two segments in all axes, but in this case, I don't really need to do that. Um, these, by the way, are spinners. Okay, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with a spinner, a spinner allows you to click each arrow. It also allows you to click and drag up and down. Okay, it won't go any lower than one. It will also keep repeating as my mouse travels past the window. You can see that my mouse is in a perpetual loop here, going from the top to the bottom. Okay, there is an option to actually have it keep repeating and it will like repeat right here as long as you're holding down, but I don't like that. I actually prefer it to go all the way off the screen like that and back down. Okay, so if you need to change seg segments. Now, so to convert this to, a bo uh, to an editable polygon, which is what we want to stay working in, which allows us to have access to the faces, the points, the edges, and everything, and it'll actually allow us to, <coughs> excuse me, to, to get some modeling done, uh, you can right-click and you can say Convert to Editable Polygon. That's the first option. You can right-click here and say Convert to Editable Polygon, or you can give yourself a hotkey for that okay which I have now your hotkeys are up here customize the user interface go to keyboard and you can set your hotkeys I do have an entire video on how you can set up your 3d studio max um, for that but you can set all your hotkeys here all you gotta do is click here highlight right there set whatever hotkeys you want you can see if I hold shift it puts shift control shift alt you can have whatever your combo you want it'll like as I press it it comes in okay um, you don't actually have to hit save or anything but if you notice that when you come back if you close 3d studio max you come back and your hotkeys are gone um, what you want to do is try it you can hit save here find this folder and what you want to do is you want to actually go to this folder and you want to go to the um, security here and make sure that it has um, uh, it, it's not secured it's not deny on anything or anything like that because it'll it'll stop you from writing anything in there so you need may need to check check the security there uh, to make sure that it can write files you can see here's my file here my start UI got saved right there okay and you can send, send this to other people and give it to them and they'll get your start UI meaning they'll, they'll even get this stuff I believe like if you set up different buttons and things like that okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this house and the first thing that we want to do is we want to make the A frame part of the house now there's about 20 different ways to do this actually um, you know, okay so let's let's just talk about the, two, the the different sub selection modes because that's what we're in right now we're in sub select there's two indicators that we're in sub select mode number one one of these is going to be highlighted yellow you can't be in sub select and not have one of these be highlighted yellow number two this is highlighted blue if I click this again it's going to come out of sub select mode and I'm now on the object itself okay you think of the object as almost like a container for the elements meaning the faces the points and the edges that make up the the geometry those are contained within the object itself meaning that this is the object the house now if I click on this this is the a polygon in the house model okay uh, because the thing to note is that if we hold shift and drag I can make a duplicate of this and if I come out of here this is actually still just the one house okay but I have two separate elements in here these are elements elements mean anything that is completely um, attached okay you'll notice that it's grabbing the whole thing okay if I were to take these two and bridge this that will make a connection there and now I go by element it's gonna get the whole thing okay because now they're all connected it's all welded up so it counts as one element meaning it is a connected piece of geometry that the lighting will cra will travel across this these points here are welded okay so we'll just undo that and I'll just get rid of this here now the other another really handy thing to be able to do here is to actually be able to isolate certain things so we can hide say say we want to there's geometry inside of this house we have like a ball and something in there and little teddy bears in this box and we want to get in there and we want to see it right um, we can actually hide different faces okay so if we hide selected here we can we have this face now if I were to export this box as is it will actually export um, like this okay this right here is just a visual thing for 3ds uh, sometimes if you notice that your object has like missing faces or something like that it seems like the geometry is broken try activating polygon 
and hitting um, unhide all just to check because sometimes if you hide certain faces and then you do like a modifier like open subdivision or something it actually can uh, mess up because each of these things has a um, has an ID on them okay polygon number five okay this is actually polygon number three this is polygon number four if I have two of them selected it's gonna say two polygons three polygons four polygons this is the same thing for ver vertexes Vertis, uh, vertex seven okay vertex number five vertex number six but if I have two of them selected by holding control and clicking the next one two vertices hold control three vertices four vertices okay if I hit control a eight vertices it selects everything so I can hit polygon control a I got six polys selected which is in fact twelve faces okay so that's just a brief rundown of the sub the sub mode now so what we're gonna do is we need to split the house down the middle and like I said there's two ways to do the a-frame here um, what we wanna do is um, we could do this and what you do is you hit connect and what what connect will do it will take parallel lines and it will draw a perpendicular line down the center of each one so if we go connect here notice that what it's doing is it's splitting each edge exactly down its own middle it's a great way to find the center of an edge um, let me show you what I mean if this is over here okay and we go around and I hit connect Okay, it didn't make a perfectly straight line through the whole thing. Okay, it went from the center of each edge to the center of the next one and the center of the next one and down the line, regardless of where the edge is. Okay, so if that edge is moved or if it's bigger, okay, and then moved, okay, we can hit ring here and then connect that. You can see it still went to the center. So that point right there is exactly halfway between these two points right here. All right so we'll go undo that alright so we can connect this all of them and then we can select this top one and we can just move it up now there's you know a basic a-frame house the other way to do this would be to take this polygon and extrude it okay and then what we can do is we can scale it in and then we can weld it together so if we select these two faces and we come over here to weld, if we bring the options up, if we start changing this threshold, eventually they'll connect. So now we haven't broken this area right here. Sure, we have a triangle here, but because this is a box model of a house, triangles aren't always a horrible thing, okay? Don't let people convince you that no matter what, you always have to work in quads. That's not true. Uh, that's never been true. Uh, most everybody knows it so what we've done is you know like I've said we've we've made it so that we can still have a flat polygon a single flat polygon here because if we do it the other way and we connect that okay we're still quads now but we now have two faces here okay which makes creating a door just a little bit more difficult not a ton difficult so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with this way and we're gonna make the door okay so the way that I do it uh, a lot of people may come in and do like a boolean operation which means they're gonna make an object for the door and they're gonna use that to cut out a hole we're not gonna do that okay we're gonna avoid boolean as much as possible but not that it's that bad of a thing and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna inset this okay inset just basically takes each edge and moves it uh, each edge will try to stay uh, perpendicular or yeah or parallel to the edge that it was generated from and they'll move in that direction okay and so what we've done here is we've brought this in and now we've added extra geometry and now we want to make this like a door so we can just simply scale it and then scale it down but you'll notice that we still have this a-frame roof so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten this out to be perfectly straight across now there's a couple ways to do that number one going from the center we could scale this 
okay and keep dragging down and down and down and down until we see the Z here it's, you can if you look down here I can't put my mouse here because I'm gonna be over here but look at this field here as I drag this down you can see that that's coming down and you can also notice that it's slowing down my mouse speed hasn't changed but look look like it goes half the screen before it changes values okay now it's almost a full screen so it slows down but I gotta keep going until that gets to zero. The other way is just to say, boom, make planar in the Z, okay? And that just does it automatically. So you can see it's like that, we hit Z. Conversely, we can do that here. We just hit planar in the Z, bam, flattens it right out. If we say planar in the Y, okay, you can see we've collapsed it in the Y. We can also collapse it in the X, and that brings it all together in the X. Okay, in this case, we want it planar in the Z. Okay. Now one thing to note when you do that is this is local space, okay? Meaning that if I change this to local space, Z up right now. But if I take this guy and I rotate it 90 degrees and I hit the move tool, you can Z see that Z is now moving to the side. So if I take this and I say, "Oh, I want this to be planar now in the X because I want to flatten it out." If I hit X, you can see that it's ruined still. It still counts its local X as the wrong direction okay um, so I if you want to have the house be on its side you need to make sure that this gets reset because if you look and I on my rotate tool I'm actually 90 degrees in the Y here I'm flipped over to the side I'm gonna sneeze one sec excuse me so if that happens what you need to do is you need to reset the transforms here um, you can actually say um, reset the transform and that will put this to be working on its side okay so now you can see that if I come here and I go in the X um, okay so yeah that didn't work but what does work is reset X form I don't know this one works for sure um, what you do is you hit reset selected and you'll notice that this gets actually applied as a modifier um, so what you do is you can collapse it and now if I take this and I do it in the X it's actually X is correct and if I hit the rotate tool you can see I'm at zero okay so I'll put that back 90 degrees back and now I'm rotated 90 degrees again so I need to go and reset this again convert it and we're back okay so I can now flatten that if I want to so now we have a door so what we want to do is we want to move this like right here now this this leaves us with a question of design um, do we want the doors bottom to be aligned with the ground or not do we want to have a step here or not because if you look right here this is gonna make a step so if, if the house is perfectly flat on the ground and a person was to walk up there would actually be a step here um, what we could do is move the house so that the, the door is there but now we've uh, now we have some geometry and some textures that are below the world officially gonna be hidden and kinda no reason to have them on there so if we want it to be the door is flat to the ground we need to be careful here because it's going to actually give us some issues um, quite potentially some some bad ones uh, but in this case what we can do is now if we want to there's a couple ways to do this we can extrude this back okay then what we can do is we can extrude it a little bit more and then scale it well, we probably want to scale it just this way okay and then we can take these two edges here including well we'll just do those two there and we can move those up that's not gonna work let's go with loop kinda hard because I have edges that are on top of edges so I'm probably not gonna get the right ones and you can see that I'm not so this is like a becoming a pain in the ass right so I don't really wanna work this way the way I actually like to do these things is I like to delete this, bam, and I use the shell modifier. Because the shell modifier just automatically gives you thickness. But there's something to note about the shell modifier. Uh, the, 
what's happening is it's kind of like the um, the inset mode where when inset worked each uh, of these um, edges tried to maintain parallelivity I guess if that's a word to its parent edge the one it was generated from and so it compensates the corner to move in for each one well this is actually doing the same thing each face is trying to move in its own normal direction meaning that it's trying to come out straight out from here as if this was a flat piece of paper that was on a flat ground and you were to stab something perfectly vertical into it that would be the direction that the normal is traveling but what's happened is this face wants to go this way but this face wants to go that way so this edge right here that's running along the top had to kind of average itself between the two and you'll notice that if I look at it from the side uh, view R here that this isn't actually lined up okay neither is the bottom okay notice how it's like it's it's fine over here but because of the way that the door and everything were this got screwed up so we need to fix that and what we're gonna do is let's um yeah we'll just hit OK alright so what we need to do is we can take this face these here and we can just make these planar in the Y bam we could take this and make it planar in the X take this and make it planar in the X okay take these and make them planar in the Y okay this is like forcing it we make that planar in the Z okay so now our house like is lined up clean okay we can check the sides just to make sure if anything looks out of whack here um, we can fix it and it looks good okay it looks like these are all vertical and everything like that so we want to make sure that we fix that early because otherwise it's going to be a a pain in the ass okay uh, so we're going to go back here by the way uh, it's uh, F3 for wireframe and F4 for edges now if, if you notice that edges don't actually come off and on see how I'm on edge faces but without it it's still there the reason for that is because of a stupid default setting called um, uh some edges only oh no 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 sorry it's it's actually here in the configure when you click realistic go to configure and display selected with edge faces uh, we want to uncheck that and now it's actually based on whether or not I hit F4 whether or not I change this here you can see that that turns off and on it would be nice if this setting got saved uh, like as a default but you can't it's always gonna be back on so it's kind of irritating but th those are the breaks okay so we got a house and we got a door let's get a roof the roof's gonna be actually quite easy it's just a matter of how you want to design it but for the most part what we want to do is we want to extrude this up now the problem is here notice this this went straight up so if I try to extrude this I get this unnatural shape here okay what I actually want to do on this extrusion here is go to the options and not go by height but actually change this to be by its local normal and you can see now that it's coming out okay and we don't need it to be that much but we'll say about right there but the cool thing about that now is that these are perpendicular here so if I extrude these guys the house comes down and I don't break anything and now if I want an overhang I can do that very easily okay so just pick those remember control to add to okay let's say I want these uh, to be even well the easiest way is just to do them at the same time so if I extrude they both come out it's gonna be even the other way is to do one side because I'm uh, I've dialed this one in let's say I like that right now when I come here what I can do if I go to the options the last setting that I used will be here so I hit OK okay so see how that came out just a little bit so let's do that again undo this time I'll do it a lot and then when I come here it's still a lot okay so that's way too much so what I want to do now is I want to scale this back in now if I hit R for scale uh, you can see that this got put to the middle but a lot of times the faces will actually default to this where if you try to scale this nothing happens and the reason is is because it's trying to scale each face 
to be flat. Um, the, there's two ways to do this to, to get this different. You can change this to be the center and now I can scale it in and out. Or, uh, let's, let's make sure I got selected. Or if it stays like this, you can change this to be um, going by vertexes. So to convert a selection, all you do is hold control and click. So notice how when I click that, it converted those faces into the poly into the points that were selected. So if I say right here and I click hold control, click here, it's going to give me the four verts that made up that face. Okay. Now if I go if I hold control and I come back to polygon, it's actually going to select more because these verts were at, are also contributing to all of the polygons around it. Okay. So if I keep going back and forth, eventually I just get the whole object. Okay because remember points uh, are shared by faces right so we just come back here boom so a quicker way than coming over here and changing this is to just convert this to edges which defaults to being from the center okay and now we can scale that back in now you'll notice that we have some funny um, shading going on and the reason for that is because newly extruded faces are not given smoothing groups by default. So what we need to do is we need to hit control A and just hit auto smooth here. A smoothing group is just a way to take a face and say hey I want this on a different lighting channel. Uh, in this case uh, let's let's put both of these on this different lighting channel. Now it's visible uh, because there's a break in the in the lighting. So these are trying to be these are in the same smoothing group number 12 here so they're trying to blend lighting across this surface meaning that these are supposed to be like one continuous surface which in this case would be incorrect we wouldn't want that but but that's what we can do. So an auto smooth just takes a an angle tolerance so let's say hey it's like 89 we'll go auto smooth you can see that it's smooth over the top right here you can see there's no hard edge but if I change this back to the default of 45 this angle right here is um, within that tolerance so it will automatically break it for us okay so there's the house looking nice and smooth we do have a door uh, in there um, but we don't have a window so let's let's make a single window on the side here now there's two ways to do this uh, by two I mean 2000 there's really a lot of ways to do it the first way would be we can make a box that we can use to cut window out so I'll show you guys how to do that um, what we can do is we can draw a box right here right on the surface but notice that that didn't happen what happened is it drew the box over here uh, if you hit auto grid it turns any surface that you're touching excuse me I need to take a drink takes any surface that you're touching um, and draws on it as if it's the actual canvas. So you can see I can actually draw a box on here. So let's say we want a window about that big. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it out just so it has enough thickness to come out. And then I'm going to move it to cross over between. Okay. If I really want to check that, I can select the house and I can hit Alt and X, and that turns it into a transparent view. Notice how it's all noisy and weird looking? The reason for that is because it's still trying to do shadows, ambient occlusion, all that stuff from the realistic render mode. Just changes to shaded, and you get a much cleaner version. And it's pretty easy to tell how far that's sticking into the house now. Okay, I can see it on both sides. All right. So then what we do is we take the house. Let's hit Alt X here. The house is selected, okay? And we come to, we want to do a, a what's called a Boolean operation, which is basically like a, uh, it's kind of a cookie cutter operation. Um, and it's not under a, it's not a modifier, okay? It's actually a creation tool, okay? So you want to be on the first one here. And you drop this down to compound objects, and you'll find Boolean and Pro Boolean. In this case, we'll just use Boolean. Um, we're set to right now be subtraction A minus B. Now, A is already set as the house. B is going to be the window. So it's going to be the house minus the window, okay? Because it's A minus B. So we pick up RAM B and we click the window and we have officially cut the window out of the house, okay? Now what that leaves us with is an actual Boolean object. So if we want to keep working on this, we need to right click this and convert it back to an editable polygon. Now you'll notice that this has actually been disconnected. It's only one connecting edge here. Uh, this connecting edge actually cannot be gotten rid of because any polygon that has to have a that has a hole in it like this must have at least one connecting edge 
um, to ensure the shape. Otherwise, the system uh, considers this like a floating element. So, and these points don't have an anchor. So, the, this this one leading edge that you get out of any hole uh, has to be there because it needs to anchor these points to the surface that it's cutting out. Otherwise, it just won't know. Um, but what we can do is we can anchor the every other corner and a simple way to do that would be to just hit one click the corner right here click this corner right here and hit connect okay so we hit the connect button and it automatically connects it conversely we have a um, the uh, graphite modeling tools up here and under the freeform modifier there's one of these things called optimize now this is a super handy tool but it's also very dangerous um, if you read that you'll see that if I hold shift I drag from one vert to the next, <clears throat> I can target weld them. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm going to hold shift. I want to weld this guy over here. Uh, well, let me uh, undo that. Let's make sure this tool is active. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to come over to here and nothing happened. That's interesting. The reason it didn't happen is because you cannot target weld to unconnected edges. So if I hold control, if I hi highlight over here control, drag between vertices to connect them with edges. So I just hold control and I can drag up here. And notice I can't even see the point under there, but it'll only allow me to connect to that point. It won't accidentally try to bridge over to here. Okay, so that's one way to do that. Now I want to do that on the inside, but it's going to be a pain in the ass because I can't see in there, and I can't really zoom in in there to really look around all that well. It's very difficult for me to try to get in there. So what do I do, right? Well, let's just uncheck everything and hit C. The easiest, fastest way to do that would be to select this face and hide it. Notice I can still see the back. Well, I have a handy tool here, back face cold toggle. I can turn that shit off. And now I can come to optimize, hold control, and I don't even need to worry about it. I can just do it from out here, okay? And I officially have them connected, all right? And then we can just say unhide all again, or hi uh, yeah, unhide all. So we're not hidden anymore, okay? So that's the Boolean method, and it works pretty good. However, sometimes, sometimes, if the operation isn't very clean, you don't end up with a perfectly clean surface. You can actually end up with like a point here, and those it needs to be cleaned up. In this case, it's such a simple operation, two cubes together, that it's not going to generate any points. But as soon as you start doing spheres into cylinders and cylinders into um, you know, other crazy shapes, toruses and things like that, you start getting a lot of extra stuff. Because well, one thing you got to note is that this actually has there's, there's a hidden edge here somewhere in this polygon. It's either going from this point to this point or this point to this point. It has to be going from one diagonal to the other. Um, whenever you boolean across that, it can often treat that hidden edge as a hard edge and create a point there for you, um, in which case things can get messed up. Um, so let me show you guys the second way of doing a window like this. So this one can this one tends to be cleaner, but it does take a little bit more work and knowledge of what you're doing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select that inside wall, and I'm going to select the outside wall, and I'm going to do a inset on those to bring it down small, and then I'm going to immediately hit bridge, and that's going to connect the two. But there's going to be something that we're going to notice here. This is actually like at a bevel, because the reason for that is because this face and the face on the inside are not the same size. Okay, you'll notice that it's wider because remember this is this has been shelled on the inside. It has to fit inside, so this wall is shorter than this wall. So when they got inset, they both came in at the same rate. So what we need to do in this case would be a simple click the Z for the tops. Okay, find out what axis this is would be the Y, and then we want to make this in the Y. And we're we're done. That's it. That's all we need to do. And now we can officially make our window whatever shape we want uh, by, you know, simply getting the, the verts if we want to. We can say, hey, you know, I don't want it as wide. You know, I want it over here. Now let's say we want another window. Well, we can simply do the same thing. Now if we go too far, we're going to get a crossover. Because remember, the points are traveling to maintain parallel lines. Well, given that, eventually these have to cross over. That's the only option. So what we do in this case is we just try to inset as little as possible. Okay, we're going to immediately bridge. 
All right. And now what we want to do is we want to take this one and we're going to make that one Z. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. It's going to look broken for a minute. This one's going to be Y. And so will this one. Okay. And now, because, you know, it, like I said, it looks pretty broken. But once we scale it down in, okay. Now let's say we want them to be the same. Well, we can simply click these two and hit, say, Z, planar. Okay. Select these two and say planar in the Z. And that lines that up. All right. So there we have two and we're still quads. Now, we have created a potential issue here uh, because what's happened is we have a point here that is parallel and when we move this up and down what we end up with is potentially broken geometry because what could happen, remember with every quad there's a hidden edge and it goes from one diagonal to the other. So in this case what happens if the diagonal is not between this point and this point. It would have to be between this point and this point, which would mean we have an edge here that's going along this whole length, but we also have an edge between these two points, okay, that are parallel to each other. So if we're really worried about that, we want to see if it's broken. The fastest way to do it is to go to edges and hit turn here. And turn will show us if there's a problem. Now in this case, you can see that we're good because it is that one. But look at the bottom here. The bottom has a point there, but it doesn't have an edge going to here. So we have a hidden edge right here. We need to find it and click it. And now we're fixed. We also need to check the inside because the inside can be in just as much trouble. So we'll just look through this window here and see. And it looks like we're OK, I think. I can see an edge coming off of every point. So we're safe out here. So now we have those two. Now how let's say we want to make some window frames. I'll show you guys the fastest way to make a window frame. It's really cool. So basically what we need to do is we need to go by edge. We're going to select one corner of each window. We'll do them all at the same time. Okay, just one corner on each one and then we hit ring, then we hold control and turn that into polygons. See what happened here? Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the scale tool and we're going to make sure that it is on this one here on the top to do it from each one's pivot. And you should be able to tell that because the, the gizmo won't be centered between everything. It'll actually be stuck to one of them. Okay? And then if we hold shift, we'll clone and we can expand that out. Okay? And we say clone to element because we just want it to be still part of the mesh. If we do this, it's going to break it out into a separate object. So we do that. Okay? and you can see that that's good and so now what we can do is we can hit that with the shell modifier but notice it's done it to the whole house it didn't isolate the shell modifier to just the things that I had selected so shell is a global operation you can't isolate that to be different on on each separated thing so we actually do need this to be a separate object so we'll just detach it and we'll call this frames okay but not as an element not as a clone we're just gonna hit OK so now what we need to do is because because we detached it notice how it's no longer highlighted those are pink lines okay if I change this to be blue for my house notice how those window frames are still pink and if I move the house around the window frames are staying behind because they're a separate object now so given that once I cloned them out like that once I detached them uh, I was still in this mode here uh, which means I can't select those because I'm stuck in subselect on the house and the window frame is not part of that house. So I need to come out of subselect. There's two ways, two places you can click that. Click whichever one of these is highlighted. So if that's highlighted, just click it, it'll turn off. This one's highlighted, click that one and it'll turn off. It's just a toggle. Or you can always just click the name right here. So with any one of these being on, you can click the name. It doesn't matter. Okay. Once that goes highlighted. And now I can click here. So now I want to hit this with a shell modifier and I want to give it a little bit of positive and a little bit of negative and that's it there's window frames so these can be as thick as you want you know basically 
uh, if you ever want them to stick out further, and the, um, you can just scale them. And the cool thing is, is that these, because the way that it was scaled, the amount that it pokes out from the outside and the amount that it pokes out from the inside are actually identical because it got scaled uniformly like that. Uh, it wasn't uniform, it was non-uniform, but it got scaled from each one's individual center. So that spacing is even. Now I can do the same thing with the, um, with the door frame if I want to. So I just come here, ring, control click, hold R, hold shift, scale it out wider. This one we're actually going to clone to object. We we'll hit OK. You can see it got came out of the object, it got darkened. So I need to come out of subselect on the house, select the frame, hit it with the shell, okay, and we're good. Now you'll notice because I had the edges in the middle, those edges got traveled. Okay? So I need to convert this to an editable polygon and simply just hit this with the Z planer. Okay? That would not have happened if I didn't have those edges in the middle. So let's prove that really quick so you guys can see. So hit ring, come here. Okay. We'll scale that out to however th wide we want it. Clone to the object because we want to be able to apply the modifier to it. Come out of here, click this, and now we want to get rid of these edges. So we're going to click that edge, and we're going to click that edge, and we're going to hit Control Backspace. That's going to delete it. Now, if I hit Delete, the D-E-L-E-T-E -E -E key that's next to your page down and below your Insert key, if I hit that, it's actually going to delete it, meaning it's going to take everything with it and the things are gone. So let me isolate this really quick. So again, if I hit Delete, it actually gets rid of it. But if I hit Backspace, it, try, it removes it out of the, the equation. However, because I only hit Backspace, if I go to Vertexes now, you can see that those got left behind. So I need to also select these guys and backspace them out. But they have a handy thing for us where we can just hold control and hit backspace and it gets rid of the points as well. Okay? So then we hit that with the shell modifier and notice how these are parallel now. These are perfect. Okay? So we can unisolate here. And then we have our frame and we can say, hey, we want the frame to be purple, you know. And there we go. Okay? And that should be that should be all all you guys really need uh, to get started. To be honest with you, uh, we used extrude, we used inset, we used bevel. Okay, uh, we covered uh, sub select. Okay, meaning how to get to a vertex and move it. Um, it is, by the way, uh, Q from select W, E, and R. Okay, just the four keys Q, W, E, R right there. Okay, those are those guys up there. So Q, E, R, Q for move. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys a couple of extra handy things just in case. Let's say I need this edge for some reason to be up here. Well, hmm. Uh, let me try to move it there and let me see if I can't get that close. That's probably not good. Let's take a look at the front view and see how close I was. I was pretty far off. So I'm going to need to come here and I'm going to need to try to align that. But if I get even closer, you can see that I'm still miles away. So this is a shit method of doing it. This isn't going to do me any good. So I'm going to undo that. And all I really need to do is just highlight edge on constraints. And now if I move it up, straight up and down, I can't go anywhere else. Okay, so now I could center that visually if I really wanted to. Okay? And I would be done. Alright? Um, there's cleanup that we could do here, and I'll show you guys how I often clean this up. I'm going to go to Optimize here. I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm just going to drag at these corners here, like so. Boom, 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 and I want this one, and I want this one. Now if we take a look at the geometry, it's a much smaller. And once I get the whole thing done, so go to here, okay, and then bring this down, bring this down. I'm holding shift and I'm dragging across. Okay, so let's go boom, 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 hit there, boom, and there, and there. Last one. 
and there we go much less geometry create the same exact shape okay and now if I wanted to I could do more stuff to it I could say hey I want a chimney so let's inset for a chimney now notice if I scale down here that I'm not losing my uh, the, the perpendicular factor of this angle here the reason for that is because the edge is on if I take that off and I scale down watch what happens okay broken uh, you can also do it by face will still work in this case however this one's having an issue generating the face so in this case we want edge okay now if I want to move this down watch what happens to this bottom edge see how it gets wider there's no edge here for it to follow there's an edge here for it to follow so it's gonna do it okay in this case I want this by face because it should be able to follow this face and now if I move it straight down you can see I can slide it down the face no problem so say I want you know in this case here face this edge right here doesn't know to follow the edge the face that I'm selected so see how it's getting stretched so in this case I would want edge but there's no edges for anything to follow so that's gonna get ruined too so in actual fact because I'm going sideways I want this to be none I can move it left and right no problem because that isn't an axis that's going to break anything. And now what I want to do is I want to extrude this out, or straight up. But look, it's going to the side. Okay. So what option is going to give me the way to go straight up? None of them. Okay. But what we can do is make this be zero and hit OK. And now we can just move it straight up. Okay. And then we can say planar in the Z okay we can now inset um, actually we can do a bevel here bevels are fun because uh, it's a two it's a double operation the first one is an extrude okay as soon as I let go of the mouse and move up and down it now becomes like a like a scale okay so I can click up and without moving the mouse now I just click again and I didn't do any bevel conversely I can extrude to zero as close as I can, let go, and I can bring it in. So it's a, it's a pretty fast way to work uh, with bevels and extrudes like that. So again, if I wanted to say, I want to extrude but not bevel, so I do the extrude, and when I lift the mouse, I click immediately before I do anything. Now if I want to um, bevel but not extrude, or if I want to scale and not extrude, I need to extrude out and then back to zero as close as I can and then I can now scale it out okay, like that so it's easy easy to work with that tool but it's, and it's actually very handy so there's a um, you know a chimney oops I'm gonna make that smaller like so you can go by the points and bring that down so and it didn't ruin any perfectly parallelness to the the roof or anything like that because we we kept everything constrained okay uh, by using these here edge face normal stuff like that it's very handy stuff uh, and I think that's it I don't really think that uh, anything else needs to be fully explained um, if you follow these steps you should be okay but you you probably will run into some stuff uh, sometimes you may want to add geometry to your mesh because it's just going to make things cleaner say it might be easier if this was split down the middle and now if you look there's no clean way for me to split this down the middle there really is not um, if I do it it's the the center of this is going to end up having to shoot over to here um, it's going to cut this line in half, this line in half, this one's not correct, this one's not in a good spot for it, so we're going to get all this extra geometry here. So if I wanted to split this down the middle, um, it would be something that I would have wanted to do beforehand, but if you must do it after, what you can do is you can just select everything and use the slice plane. It's very easy. You just hit slice plane, and it gives us this plane here, but if I move up and down, you can actually see this edge here being generated okay and you can rotate this at any angle that you want okay so I'll rotate this 90 like so and now I can move it wherever I want you'll notice that the slice plane doesn't actually breach up here but it is slicing up here anyway for us and then 
this is not an operation that's done so if I uncheck this okay it doesn't actually do it you actually need to hit slice bam now I can turn this off and you can see now that I've got these extra points as I split this down the middle but if I'm gonna do this I need to clean this up okay I want to want to pull some of this stuff see like in this case right here this sucks right here so I'd want that to at least be like that but more than likely I'd want to move them move the window here so the window got split in half so this edge comes over to here so I wouldn't say that what I've done here is a good thing but it's not that bad and don't forget that anything you fix on the outside is most likely going to need the same fix on the inside okay most likely in, all, in almost all cases uh, you're going to need to fix both Okay, went one too many there. Um, be wary of the optimize tool. While it's handy, it's actually also dangerous uh, because a single click, none, click edges to collapse them, combining two vertices into one. What does that mean? Well, if I click this edge, it's going to pull the two vertices uh, to the center of that edge and weld them together. So what can end up happening is, oh, I'm in you know wireframe mode and I'm trying to click this over here here something right here and I accidentally click that over there but I wasn't really paying much attention to that and then I go and I do a whole bunch of other stuff and then when I come back I come inside and play in my house and it looks like this and you're like what the fuck just happened that happened so undo that it's very 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 important that when you're done optimizing you either click the button or you right click you can right click a few times if the menu comes up you're safe okay don't keep this on because like I said if you click anywhere see what happened I tried I tried to click underneath here and it didn't look like anything happened it's like oh okay well I'll just move on and go do my thing but in reality in reality look what I did look what I actually did I broke it Okay, so I need to undo that until that gets fixed. This is dangerous. Super, super handy, but super, super dangerous because, like I said, a single click can destroy things. Okay? In fact, um, no, if you drag across stuff, it doesn't do it. But if I were to say click, 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 you know, I mean, I just wrecked this thing. So you want to undo all that stuff. Be very careful with this tool. I'm going to say it two more times. Be very careful with this tool. Be very careful with this tool. This tool will break your model on the back side of your model without you knowing it. Almost guaranteed. Almost 100% guarantee. I can guarantee you that you will, if you use this enough, break your model some point, not notice it, keep moving forward. When you finally realize it happened, you're fucked. You're literally like I have to go all either all the way back to the step when I did this or I have to scrap this whole model and start over. It can get that bad. Be very careful with it. See, I give you an extra warning. There you go. So that should be about what all we need to know uh, to get started with box modeling stuff. Obviously there's a lot more we can do. There's deformers and things like that. Hey, I want to, you know, bend my whole house, you know. There's nothing wrong with doing any of this stuff. There's open subdivision, which will melt the house okay essentially it's gonna smooth everything over um, you can actually give this more subdivisions you know to make a really smooth surface however this relies heavily on creasing meaning let's see if I show this here like so I can crease this edge you know if I hit control A and I put everything to crease point two five you can see that my house is still curved but it's got a round corner I took every edge and made it a crease of point two five all right, and as I bring this up, okay, it gets smoother and smoother and smoother going around the edge, like so. So if you wanted to make a really nice gingerbread house, but be careful because this um, is actually generating tons and tons of geometry, and based on my raw topology starting out, it's not great topology. Okay, it's fine for a house, but it's not great for other stuff. Notice here we've got issues okay so uh, you know be just be wary of that but uh, m there is a humongous 
um, use for the open subdivision thing. This kind of like box modeling something, creasing the edges and giving it an open subdivision uh, will, uh, if you use just those three things, uh, you will be able to model about 90% of anything you ever need to model ever, uh, for the most part. Uh, using a combination of this and box modeling, yes, you, you can pretty much make anything. Character, dragon, uh, fly, ant, rock, house, anything. Okay, it all it, it can all stem from that. You can use it here. Um, there's also other tools to give more detail, like chamfer and things like that. But I'm not going to get into those. They're a little more advanced. They're not really advanced or anything. But uh, chamfer is essentially just takes an edge and splits it. So if we come here and we say chamfer, I can click this and I can split that edge like so. There's also options for it, um, where I can say, hey, I want more than one segment. Okay, um, I want it lar larger or whatever. Um, I can fiddle with this all I want. Okay, I actually even have a curve ability here if I use the quad chamfer. Okay, and we can we can do that stuff. Uh, and that's it. So hopefully this was useful for the new people. Uh, if you were, aren't new to Max, you learn, you should have learned somewhere between nothing and zero. I should hope. Uh, if you didn't know any of this stuff, shame! For shame, laddie. Ah, for shame, you'll be a terrible Max user. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's always um, tips and tricks that uh, we don't all know uh, at all times. For instance, I didn't know in UE4 that if you held Control and L or Shift and L and you click on a surface, it'll create a light with the color of whatever you clicked on. And I've been using UE4 for a little while now, so... That's it. There's, there's a house for you. Um, again, we just got a door and a few windows. It can be as crazy as you want, obviously. It can be a big mansion. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, like, if I were going to do, like, a, a really crazy house, like, I would start by doing this. This this would be my workflow. I'm not going to try to actually create anything crazy or anything like that. But what I would do would be, like, okay, I'm just going to go on the extrude tool and let's see, I want the house to come out like that, I want it to go like that, then I want it to kind of go like that, and maybe I want another wing over here. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Let's make the whole thing two-story, okay? Um, and then we'll say, hey, you know, over here I want like a garage. Uh, back here I want like, you know, the, the overhang for the for the backyard stuff, you know, we're getting into some, you know, weird architecture house or something like that. And every single one of these things could have doors and windows and all kinds of shit. There's nothing stopping you from taking this and saying, hey, you know, I want these guys here to be, um, where's that thing, X, like collapse like that, you know, I want all of these here to go in the y direction okay I missed one here put that one in the y um, you can see I got an issue here so I probably would want to delete these and select these two and bridge them but that's actually not gonna work because there's only two and they're See how it doesn't work like that? So the, what I could do is I could come here and I could create a polygon manually. Um, and if you go counterclockwise through the points, you can actually create them like so. Okay, just click on the point and it will allow you to uh, make them. And you can right click or double click to get off there. And then I'd say control A and you know weld or something to get them all welded back together. So you can make a house quite quite quickly like that. Um, let's say I want this. See how this one has a nice connection going across right here? Let's say I like that and I want that to I want that to happen. The, another tool that's handy is the cut tool. Uh, so if I come here and I hit two, um, there should be a cut tool here somewhere. There we go. Cut. I can just click. Now make sure if if you notice my crosshair has three states uh, or four actually nothing. I'm over something. I'm over an edge and I'm over the the vert. The vert becomes that little crosshair right there. I want to make sure I stay on that. And there we go. We've got a nice cut going across there. Okay. Like, f uh, you know, for instance, I could also cut this in a, you know, really weird way like that. And it will make a cut along there. In fact, it's cut 
from where I had already clicked before. Because the cut tool will actually continue a chain. So I go click, 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 click. You know, eventually it can break. It can't, you know, can't figure out where to go. But the cut tool is, is really handy. And again, you can just right click to get off there. Um, and, you know, I may want this roof here to be collapsed. Now, this is going to cause an issue here. So this may not be something that I can do. Um, it's actually okay. Came out just fine. And again, I want to weld everything together. Um, just click that a few times. Um, if I want, you know, I can take this guy. Uh, here's here's something to note. If I extrude this up, I actually have kind of broken geometry here uh, because if I take a look here, if I keep clicking in one spot. I actually have this face back here, okay, that is disconnected from this face here. So if I move this, there's a face there, right? So this right here is not clean geometry, okay? I can't run a connection between this edge here and the other edge, okay? These are two edges that are sharing the same basic space. So this is something that I don't, you know, you don't want to do that. If you really want to have this happen, what you would want to do would be to take this ring. Let's see if I can't even ring that. And go around all the way until you get all the way around because you want to keep quads, assuming. And then we can connect that. Okay. Now with that connected, what we can do is we can snap and put that right there. So what that gives us is now if I pick this guy here, I should get the other one. You gotta sometimes click twice. Okay. Now what I can do is I can just take these faces and delete them. I can do the optimize tool and hold shift and I can weld that back. Okay, now that's clean. That's perfectly clean. I can actually officially connect totally across these right here. If I hit the connect tool, it will. Um, it didn't. Let's see. Do I have an extra edge here? Yeah. See how I have an extra vert here? I actually have geometry on the side. These faces here should not be there. Okay. So if I optimize that back to there. Let's see, if I move this here and I weld that. Notice how it won't weld. The reason it won't weld is because we actually have, there's something else here. There's a face or something here. Ah, let's see. Let's see, if I try to weld those, no matter how I set the tolerance, how big they'll never weld and the reason is is because ah here's the problem there's two points here that aren't welded I believe and they won't weld either so we need to find out what's wrong with it but you can see that the way that the geometry is it's totally broken the way I did it so this wouldn't be a good thing I have to kinda come in here and I have to clean this up by deleting some of this stuff. In fact, I should get rid of this face altogether right here. So now, let's see. Yep. And now I can weld them. And here, notice there's an there's a face right here that I can't have. So I need to delete that guy. All right. There's also a face, a point here with no leading point anywhere else. Okay. So what I really want to do is I want to actually pop that there. Okay. And now I could take these two edges and I should be able to bridge them together to create the actual clean geometry, right? So a lot of times you may, if something's not welding, you may want to look for geometry that's hidden. And you can do that by hiding stuff. So we say hide selected. doesn't look like there's anything there except look right here. There's a bunch of faces inside here that shouldn't be here. So I need to delete those, this one too. Otherwise, nothing's ever going to line up. There's a problem right here, too, because there's a point here, but there's no point here. Right? So what do I do here? Well, it's there's a couple of quick ways to do it. Number one, I could say, hey, I'm just going to put a point right there. And then all I need to do 
is match this one's Z position. So I can copy this guy's Z, put that here, double click, paste that. Okay, now they're at the same height, which means I can now just connect that back. Okay, and if I hold control, I can just connect these because they're 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 one piece. Okay, so I can unhide all here. Uh, I always lose that. There we go. Unhide all. Okay, so you know geometry can look good and still be broken. Okay, uh, very very easily, and I'll show you that very quickly right here. If I don't show this, you would have no idea that this is broken geometry. Okay, but if I show this. So, uh, somebody who had with a keen eye would notice this like oh wait a minute there's a point here but there's nothing coming off of right here there's no connection right here so what's actually going on with this point well let me let me see let me move this oh I see oh you're not supposed to do that dude hey bra you can't do that man you know and that's what happens when shit goes awry like that that is I mean it's it's actually it's it's gonna work it will work but what'll happen is your booleans your textures things are gonna get all funky in the lineup um, and and you also have wasted texture all of this piece of geometry between here and here which is in fact right here that half of this is wasted completely wasted not only that but it's also ca it's gonna cause um, possible render bugs, lighting issues, you know, your textures won't line up as clean, things like that. Um, but like I said, there's, it's, there's nothing officially, like, officially broken about it, but it's not good. It, it's not going to give you good results uh, running down the line later on. Um, but in this case now, I think we might be okay. There's always actually a test that you can do. If you hit X, you can actually type in, let's say, hey, I want the unwrap. You know, you can type whatever you want, but one of the things that you want is called STL check. Okay, and what that does is it's um, STL is a file format that uh, often used for uh, manufacturing, especially in 3D printing. And an STL check just kind of runs a bunch of checks to see if what's wrong with the stuff. And you can see that I actually have quite a few errors, and I have 17 of them. But I don't really know what they are. So are they an open edge? It looks like they're open edges. They're not double faces. They're not spikes. They're not multiple edges. They're open edges. Which means at some point around here, somewhere around here, there's some unwelded verts going on. So if I were to get rid of this, that one ain't it. Just single click. That one's it right there. See that right there? That's not welded. So what I can do is I can just hold optimize and just kind of drag across there and that should actually fix it. Well, apparently not. Let's see. It might not allow me to weld here and there, if if I can't Oh, no, it worked. Weld there. Let's take just this one. It goes by itself. Just when you click one vert, uh when you click one time, if there's a million verts right here, okay, there's 3 here, but if I click once, I just get one of them. Okay? But if I click all of them, I might be able to weld it. Yeah, and it welded it together. We can check right here. Uh, the other thing, you know, you can always do Control A and set a low weld tolerance, something really low. Uh, you can see there's no change before and after are the same. Uh, when it starts to change, uh, is right here. Let me back that down just a little bit. So right there, and I don't see anything change on the model, so I think it's safe. Just hit OK. Let's run that STL check again. And we'll hit check, and we can see you can see that we cleaned up the the errors up here, okay? Uh, but we still have problems down here, which means probably right here. Yep, there's a point. There's an extra point right there that has no business being there. So I might be able to optimize it by holding shift and dragging. Nope. What about if I just backspace it? Uh, it worked, but it didn't really like it. That one's okay. That one's okay. So if I auto smooth again, should fix that. Okay, we'll run the STL check again. No errors. Uh, wait, nope, we still have a few. Okay, so I haven't fixed this entirely. How many verts do we have there? Two verts. Can we weld them? Yes, so that should have solved that. Two verts. Weld those. Let's hit Control A and weld, just in case. 
Uh, notice I have an extra edge here. The way to get rid of these is just to click it and hit backspace, okay? Um, don't hit control backspace because, well, it doesn't really matter because the reason is that they didn't take these points away is because there's other edges that I don't have selected that are still, that are using them as well. In fact, there's one, two, three, four edges here that are still using it. So be, it recognizes, hey, you know, you're only deleting this edge here, but this, this point right here is also supporting this other stuff, so it won't get rid of it. Okay, and we got an issue here, so let's try to connect that. Okay, notice I'm holding control and it's not connecting these two. If I try to click these and I hit connect, it's not connecting them. Well, why? Let's take a look. We'll grab this point, we'll move it out. There's the problem right there. There is no point here. Okay, so well, once again, we can insert a vertex. Okay, we get this guy's Z position. Just copy that. We'll paste that here, all right, and then we hold, go to optimize and hold shift to connect this back, Then we can hold control to run a connection here, and now we fix that, okay, again, we need to run another auto smooth, all right, let's run the STL check, so we hit X, STL, just hit enter, hit check, okay, we've gotten rid of everything, but we still have something right here, and we're not, and it's making this edge for me over and over again, and now I actually can't delete it. So one of these is going to have more than one vert. Two verts selected, we'll weld that. Two verts selected, we'll weld that. That, that still has two selected. Because this is being a pain in the dick, I'm just going to delete it and bridge this back together. Okay. Vertex 58, vertex 78, vertex 77, vertex 76. Let's auto smooth one time real quick. Auto smooth just in case. And then our final STL check. Still a fucking error right there. I don't. I'm going to delete both of these. should be two verts. There should be two verts. And that should be two verts. Ah, uh, wait, I thought there was an edge there. Okay, so let's bridge these two guys together and take a look. Uh, the, by the way, the reason that all of this error stuff happened was because of the sloppy method that I'd used in the very beginning of doing it. I just went ahead and crushed things together. I didn't care. But when you go to actually work on it later, you realize, oh shit, you know, I wasn't very careful here. Um, by the way, here I just held shift and dragged this to there. All right. So let's try that STL check one last time, or maybe another 50 times. STL, hit enter, check. Errors are three errors. So we've got some kind of issue over here, but I think I'm done trying to fix this shit now. Yeah, obviously one of these has got an extra face or something in there I need to delete. Um, but that's how you can check stuff to see if there's errors. Um, and you can just go through systematically and fix them. If your whole object lights up red, um, just just be warned about the, the STL check actually checks for open faces. So if I delete the bottom of the house, and I run the STL check and I hit check it's actually gonna flag all that because they're all open edges so what you can do is you can say oh okay well let me just check for double double face spike and multiple edge those are the real bad ones open edges are actually something that we insert into our models a lot you know often if this was gonna be like a manner that you were gonna see in the distance there's no need to, for me to texture and use the geometry and everything for the underside of the house here which is buried in the ground you know doesn't make any difference uh, for me or it doesn't do me any good to do that so there's modeling in 3d studio max is the basics of it uh, i can't really think of too much else if you guys have any issues or if you are new again this is for new users so i appreciate you guys coming on board and checking out my videos um if you guys are having issues with something let me know and i'll get a get on that if not uh just you know a comment back to you in the comments or something um it will be, you know, I'll make a video for it if it's not something I can quickly explain in a sentence or two. Uh, so let me know if you guys have issues and I'll take care of it. So this is Hippos signing off. Thanks for watching.